Two pounds. It would be good if it's that much. Okay, now what we have before me is the uh, Cabernet Franc, which we crushed about a half hour ago. We finished crushing it. What I'm going to do now is take a sample of this and put it in this beaker, and we're going to test specific gravity. Why do we do that? Specific gravity will tell us what the sugar content is and tell us what the potential alcohol is, which is all important. So let me do that now. This takes a little bit of time. Now we'll, we'll take a measurement to see what we have here. Okay, and we'll give it a little spin first. Okay. All right, so we're right about here, we'll say. Right there. Now let's see what that is. It looks like about 12%, if that's right, potential alcohol, around 12%, but let's see what the book says. It's a little more, it, this is 12.6%, so it's, 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 it's around maybe a little, little more than 22 bricks, and it's a little higher than what we picked last week, and when we tested this last week, it was 21, so it's picked up uh, a, a brick, brick and a half. And that's good because then that, that's going to give us at least 12.6% alcohol, which as I said before we had on the other, that's perfect for us. So we know the sugar is good, the alcohol is good, and the next step will be I'll put some metabisulfate in that and let it sit overnight. The metabisulfate will kill any, uh, uh, any bacteria that might be in there. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll add the starters and uh, it'll be off to the races and we'll get fermentation probably Monday morning. This is Saturday. Okay, the next step is we'll add a um, metabisulfate to it uh, and that'll kill the wild yeast. And that's important because if you don't do that, uh, the, the whole uh, crush could turn sour and you don't really get wine then. And then we'll add an identified uh, yeast, which is called Pastor Red, uh, and we'll do that tomorrow. So uh, it was important to know the weight because that's how I'm going to uh, determine how much metabisulfate I'm going to put in. And that's the next step. All right, what you see here is the metabisulfate on a scale. Uh, and what we're going to do now is to uh, put the metabisulfate 
into uh, the crushed grapes and juice. And the reason for that is, is we want to uh, kill, or at least stun, uh, wild yeast and any bacteria that might be in, uh, in the grape must. And that'll, that'll work for about 24 hours. And then uh, I can uh, put in my own yeast, which will be a Pastor Red yeast, which is what I always use. And I'll put that in tomorrow, and then we'll have a clean fermentation. So right now what I'm going to do is take the metabisulfate, put it in this glass of water. The water is warm water. We're going to let it dissolve. Okay, now we're going to pour the dissolved metabisulfate into the grape must. And this is where it gets a little hairy. You pour it in, like this, and then you take your hand, plunge it in, and mix it up. That's better than your teeth. Well, that's true. I mean, they don't use feet anymore. Well, they may, I don't know. And you, can, you can smell it a little bit, the metabisulfate coming up. Mm. Okay, this is good. Now, this is going to sit overnight. Now, with the bubbles, though. No, yeah, the bubbles don't mean anything. This is this will okay. this will sit overnight, and then tomorrow at about this time, I'll take samples out, and I'll add my own yeast, and we'll put the the the, the, uh, the yeast in here, and by the next day this will be fermenting. The cap will come up just like it did on the other uh, on the Merlot. So there we are. We're all set. We can put this guy to bed for tonight. What we have here is the Merlot which we picked last week. And to that uh, I added starter and uh, it started to ferment this past Monday. And what you're looking at is the cap. The French call it a, cha a chapeau which means hat or cap. And once this uh, uh, the starts to ferment the seeds and the skins rise to the top and the juice stays on bottom and it gets very hot and what you do is you punch the cap down, you push it down back underneath the uh, 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 juice and it keeps the cap or the, the skins and the pits moist. And that's important because if you don't do that uh, th they could dry out and start to uh, go bad and you could wind up with vinegar instead of wine. I want to uh, point out a couple of things. We keep a thermometer in here and what you want to do is keep the cap uh, and, and the whole fermentation in the 80s. You don't really, you know, it could spike at 90, but you really don't want it any higher than that because then you'll get sort of a cooked flavor to your wine. Uh, when we tested this initially after we picked it, we found it was uh, 22 bricks uh, and we uh, checked it out and it will come out to a potential uh, alcohol of 12.6, which is exactly what we're looking for. We don't really want to go much higher than 13. So 12.6 is pretty good. If we can get that, we'll be very happy. I punch down the cap, and what I'm going to use is a paddle I made in 1983. Uh, and it's worked all along. If you come close, you can see how we do it. I start from the end and I push down. And you can see the juice underneath. And what we're trying to do is aerate the cap. Get some juice up in the cap, keep the cap moist. You can see all that bubbling up. And that also cools off the cap. And we'll do this a couple of times a day. Usually, uh, if I'm trying to really get a lot of color out of it, I'll do it three times a day. Or if it's, if it's very warm. And this was very warm this week, so I came in and I punched it down three times a day. Sometimes we'll We'll do it and only do it two times a day. And so I do this. Okay, now the cap is getting aerated. And in a couple of minutes it'll pop up again, but it's, it's kept moist and all the skins will stay moist. And also when you do this, you'll help the color, because remember, color is in the skins, not in the pulp. It helps the, the wine take on a nice deep color.